at that point I was I was able to to get to safety get to the safety of a, a good friend who took me to my mom's house and you know we went to the uh, the hospital mm -hmm. and then from that point everything just kind of um, came together I had the the safe exam done mm -hmm. at a local hospital and we everything just kind of went from there and, and my process my recovery process had begun at that point yeah wow yeah and you know unfortunately um this is an experience that so many women face all too often absolutely and i want to go back to the first assault mm -hmm. um, because we see a lot of that happening and i know you can speak to that working um with you know young girls and working doing the work that you do what are some of the recommendations that you would share with women who have men in the home who are not mm. um, the children's father. Mm -hmm. We Now, we do know that there are some fathers who uh, are evil and perverted, mm -hmm. but I know and I've read myself that studies have shown that um, men who are in the home who are not the children's father, um, those cases tend to happen more often mm -hmm. uh, as it relates to sexual violence and molestation and rape. So what are some of the recommendations that you would have for a mother who is dating a man, married to a man who's not the children's father? Watch your children. If you notice any um, abnormal behavior, if you notice that they were not wetting the bed, but they are now, if you notice that they were a kid that was happy-go-lucky, very outgoing, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden they're very closed in, very mm -hmm. um, secluded and stays to themselves a lot, mm -hmm. um, or if they're very quiet now, mm -hmm. you know, just notice any subtle change because there are different symptoms of um, child abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if he comes around and they're like, I don't want to be around him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or even look for the ones, family members mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, look for the ones who are singling your kid out. If they're always bringing gifts for your kid, mm -hmm. if they want your kid to, your child to sit on their laps. Mm -hmm. That's an absolute no-no, in my opinion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, do not allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Also, if your child comes to you, I've heard this so many times, if your mm -hmm. child comes to you and says, Mommy, you know, Uncle Peanut has touched me in this place, mm -hmm. or Mr. Tony has done this to me, believe your child. Mm -hmm. Support your child. Mm -hmm. One of the worst things you can do as a parent when your child is reaching out to you for safety and for help is to reject them mm -hmm. because you're re-victimizing re your child all over again. Mm -hmm. They're coming to you for safety, for help, for protection. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, please believe your child. Yeah, that, and I think that's a very critical point because, you know, over the years ministering to women, I've heard these kinds of stories mm -hmm. over and over again and how um, when the children went for help, the person that they spoke to, and most of the time it's the mom, mm -hmm. uh, did not believe them. Absolutely. But I also have heard some stories where uh, the mothers um, were getting ready to kill the person. Uh, yes. I like those kind of mamas. Absolutely. Okay, my mama was that kind of mama. <laughs> You know, because your children need to know that they can talk to you and they can tell you anything. Absolutely. And so I, I just I applaud your bravery because, you know, it's bravery that allows one to come forward, particularly, mm -hmm. you know, after so long, because I remember you sharing with me when you finally shared with your mom, uh, you know, this this experience and just how that went mm -hmm. for you. Uh, and I thought that was pretty powerful. Yes. So I actually did not share with my mom that um, this person had assaulted me. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually just disappeared. He never came back mm -hmm. around again. Mm -hmm. And I tried to tell her mm -hmm. at one point she was in the kitchen frying some chicken or something. And I was like, Mom, do you remember uh, Mr. So-and-so? Mm -hmm. And she was like, mm, yeah. I was like, well, where is he? Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, child, I don't know. He's somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I was waiting for her to say, why are you asking about him? Mm -hmm. And she never did. Mm -hmm. So some 20 plus years later, mm -hmm. um, I was triggered right. by uh, something that had taken place. One of the topics that had taken place in our uh, support group mm -hmm. meeting, I was triggered. And I was like, wait a minute. This did happen to me when I was 14, not only at 24, but it did happen mm -hmm. when I was 
14 and I had a conversation with the uh, counselor and she urged me, she said, you have got to tell your mom mm -hmm. you, because you have to heal from this. Yes. You've suppressed it, but you hadn't healed from it. Sure. So she said to me, you need to write your mom a letter mm -hmm. to tell her exactly what happened. And the purpose of the letter is so that you can get all of the details out because if you try to sit down and have a conversation with your mom or with the person that you want to tell your parent, mm -hmm. you may break down and cry mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they may break down and cry or you, and you may not be able to get everything out. So if you write it down on paper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a form of a letter mm -hmm. and hand it to the person, hand it to your mother, then she can read it mm -hmm. and read through each and every detail that you want to share. And then you're, you're getting it all off of you. Mm -hmm. And the other key thing she said was, and then after your mom reads the letter, make sure you go and do something fun together, something that you and your mom enjoy, mm -hmm. so that she doesn't think that you're angry with her, mm -hmm. so that she doesn't think that you you think any different mm -hmm. of her. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do that. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. In uh, July of 2013 